Welcome back. I got super exciting news. Well, it's super exciting to me. There's a bunch of people that are working on building resonators of their own, and they're sort of using this video series as a guide, which I'm terribly sorry about, but I don't know of a better resource out there, really, to get it done. I have noticed that Mule is starting to put out a bunch of really nicely done videos that show some of their process. It's really cool to see, actually. I like them a lot. They're well done. Uh, my new friend Rick, he's spinning his own cone for his uh, parlor-shaped uh, resonator that he's building. I was really excited to see somebody spinning their own cone because it would just be really cool if somebody got so good at spinning cones that we could start experimenting with other materials. He's got these great ideas for modifying his bead roller, so he's done a bunch of that. He's come up with solutions to problems that I had to solve, like he's wrapped a piece of metal around his wooden template so he can bend over the edges of his guitar. Yeah, he's got a lot of neat ideas. I'm interrupting this talking session with some more talking <laughs> because look what just came in the mail. I got this super cool bead roller jig from Rick, who we were just talking about. And I was just mentioning, yeah, he's got a ton of clever ideas. Well, here's one of his clever ideas and holy cow, is this clever. Okay, here's how this works. And I have to admit, I would have never thought of this in a hundred years. So I haven't bolted it on yet. I've just got it sitting there, but it has these two bolts, which bolt to the back, you know, like so. What happens is, you loosen this nut up and this whole, this part slides in and out, right? And it's got this little pin on the end here, which is lined up with here. And so when you put your guitar top on here, the circle that we have to bead roll for the cover plate, you just let the guitar top ride on this and it's the exact distance from there that you need. And that way you get a perfect circle without having all that focus issues <laughs> that I always have when I do this. I mean, that's super clever. I would have never thought of that. So he sent me a full-on drawing with it, which I haven't really looked at yet because it was immediately obvious. As soon as I saw this thing, I was like, oh, I know what that does. I was super excited about it. Look how cool that is. He's got the picture right there that kind of shows how the pins lined up with the wheels. Yeah, so that's kind of exactly what I thought. So obviously Rick has some pretty good machining skills. You know, we've got this flat-sided thing here. We got this, I mean, he, he clearly he's... He's a very good at things, so, man, that's so cool. My other new friend, Chuck, he's cutting out his material on a plasma cutter, and he's also got bead roller modifications. Apparently, I'm slacking on modifying my bead roller and coming up with jigs for it, which I sort of knew, but it hasn't been a priority, so it sounds like I better get up to speed on that. So Chuck has a really cool idea for joining his sides to the back and the top. It loosely reminds me of the Fiddle Edge Dobros that... Michael Messer did a run of. Those are super cool. I know he had a really hard time getting that to work. Um, Chuck's concept isn't exactly the same, but it is an interesting concept for joining the sides in the back and the top. Um, there's a couple of kids in Austria, Australia, same place, I don't know, high school kids. They're doing resonators for their senior project. And so I've been sending plans and anything I can, answering questions, just trying to help these kids along so that their projects turn out really cool. Uh, I sent a sound well to Spain. I, I think I mentioned a while ago, the sound wells are probably the hardest part of building these things. And so <laughs> that was what he was asking me for. He said, hey, can you send me a sound well? I, I really need a sound well. So hopefully I get another update on that one to see how that one's coming out for him. Um, we got a doctor in the UK. I think he's trying to build a buffer based on my buffer build video that's somewhere on this channel. I've been really slow to draw up a baritone CAD plan for a guy who's he's got his own unique shape and he wants to build his own custom baritone. He's probably given up on me and moved on because I, I kind of keep forgetting to draw that CAD plan for him. Shoot. It's really cool to see that the effort of doing this is, is having a little bit of an impact and people are finding it useful. Okay, so to that end, for those five of you that watch these videos that are building, I want to talk about soldering the bodies real quick because that can be a big form of discouragement at first. If you, For you guys that are building, and there's only a few of you, if you've soldered your body together and it looks like this, like don't be bummed. That's what they look like when you solder them together. In fact, if you watch any of the videos that the big builders put out, theirs look just like this too when they solder them together. There's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing different about the way mine looks when it first gets soldered than any of theirs. So don't be terrified that it looks like this. All it takes is a little bit of sanding with some light grit and then you get this. Like, I don't usually show this on the video very often because it just looks terrible, right? Like, look how bad it looks. 
It looks awful. So I tend to not show it that much. Not that I'm hiding it, but it just looks bad. <laughs> but honestly, it's not bad. It, that's really good. Well, I'm pretty impressed with Paul's guitar. I think it's looking magnificent. I love that cover plate. For now, I think I'm just going to leave these two bodies like that, and I'm going to start focusing on necks. As much as I want to just make these bodies look incredible for video, it would just be a waste of time to make these things perfect right now. But I already am convinced that they're going to be perfect. These are amazing. So yeah, moving on to necks for now. Time to dig out some of the neck blank material. As I dug into this pile, I was surprised to find an old Stratocaster back there. It's almost totally complete. It's got tuners and pickups and switches and stuff. Anyway, it seemed like a good place to keep it, so I left it behind. I'm literally counting calories or grams or something. I don't want these guitars to need a Jenny Craig session or four. I also have this amazing piece of flame maple that just sits in the wood pile. It stares at me like my dog does when it's feeding time. I wanted to work that into these builds as well. After cutting it down to the correct lengths and thicknesses, and storing away the leftovers with lengths and thicknesses that are never big enough to use, I'm ready to assemble the puzzle. Oh, and I need some veneer pieces in the middle of the maple so it looks, I don't know, expensive, I guess. I actually planned ahead well enough when cutting the maple to end up with small cutoffs for fretboard binding. Not sure why my brain was 11% more efficient than normal today. Okay, that's going to be one of the neck blanks. So two mahoganies, two maples, these are super flamey, and then a piece of maple, uh, mahogany veneer in the middle of it. So pretty understated, pretty simple, but I think that, mahog that maple stripe is going to look amazing. So now I think it's just uh, glue up this neck blank. Well, since the first glue up wasn't hard enough, we might as well make this one harder. So this one's going to be seven. I don't know if you count the veneers as a piece, but it's got two pieces of veneer and then these three strips in the middle and the two big mahoganies on the outside. So I think that's going to be a super cool looking neck blank as well. As soon as that other one's done drying, I'll get this one in the clamps and in the vise and glue it up too. I used cutting the nut slot as my depth checker. Then I put my depth checker in there and see where I'm at and see if I need to go up and down on here or not. That's really good. Okay, so I don't need to go up and down any, so we can just go at it. I got 
had to make up my mind Oh, well, there's no moving forward I can make cats or tail Or see what's around the corner Nights can't be crawling through my blood I wake up I feel like the holidays really interrupted my progress. Even though I'm not technically behind schedule, I feel like a bit of catch up is in order. My plan to triple my productivity is genius on another level. Everything was going swimmingly. I was getting the shop cleaned, working on the fretboard, and starting to finish Sam Paul's body. I was pleased. But then there was a small mishap. And it turns out, even though I'm a pretty easygoing guy, apparently I'm not that easy to work with. Back to work on the fretboard and necks. You can see the neck blanks in the background of this shot. I've got them all done and they're out of the clamps. They always need a lot of clean up and true up and get them all perfectly square, etc, etc. Before I do that though, I wanted to get the end piece of binding glued onto the fretboard, so that's what I'm working on here. Sanding it to perfect length and then glue it on. I probably could have done this at the same time I did the side binding, but I didn't, so here we are. Now the neck blank cleanup begins. I didn't want to give the impression that they come out of the glue up process looking perfect. They just don't. I still get nervous every time I start cleaning up these neck blanks. I've never had to cut a neck blank apart from a bad glue up, but I suppose the possibility exists, so I guess that's what still makes me nervous about it. Okay, we're making good progress here. I just got these neck blanks all trued up, all perfectly squared up. Um, they're beautiful. They came out amazing. The glue up was perfect. Super happy with that. I just made a video for Paul and I tried to show him this detail of what they look like. So the five piece like that and the seven piece like this. And I'm asking him to choose number one or number two. Once he chooses, I'll be able to start cutting these out. So since one of them's for the 14 fret version and Paul's is a 13 fret version. So I can't just cut them both and then have them choose because I need to cut them slightly different. Nobody's sent me an email about this second bronze one that I'm doing showing interest in it. If somebody is interested in it, send me an email sooner than later so that I can cut this neck out to your specs or what you want to see. Do you like a fat neck, a thin neck? So many questions I'll have for you. Like I haven't chosen a fretboard for the second one or the binding type or any of those things. None of that's done yet. So I just need people playing these things and giving me the feedback. Prices are low right now because I'm in that, you know, is a good stage. <laughs> I need the feedback. I'm convinced they're good at this point, but I still, you know, I need the feedback. Since Paul and I are on opposite sides of the planet, and I don't know if I'll hear from him today or not, I've decided to keep moving forward. The plan is to cut both of these blanks so that they will work for both 13 and 14 fret attachment points. I'll end up leaving the heel of the neck pretty thick and then adjust it once I get the news. Here I'm laying out that idea on the templates and making sure scale length is good, there's room for a nut at the end of the fretboard. You know, just minor inconsequential stuff like that. None of it affects guitar playability, right?
All right, so Paul has chosen a neck, which means I was able to get all of the heels for the two necks all worked out. Paul chose neck number one, which is the five piece. It just has the two maples and the one uh, mahogany veneer in the middle. So the seven piece will be for the other one. Um, yeah, these necks are coming out really good. I've got the truss rod slots caught in them and everything's pretty well shaped up. It's time to just cut the hole in the bodies and start getting these to fit perfectly. I need to order truss rods. Now there's a couple differences between these necks. So they were pretty much the same up to this point except for the heel because of the different where they attach at the body. But now they're going to start to diverge pretty greatly. Paul's gets a totally different headstock and he wants, he doesn't want the slotted headstock. It's just the regular peg head where the tuners come up through the back. So that's going to be that one. This one's going to have the slotted headstock. I mean, that's my plan so far is to give this one a slotted headstock. So Paul's going to get some pretty big ears um, glued onto his and then it has a custom shape. And yeah, you'll see that come together. And then Paul also wants carbon fiber rods in his. So once I get those, I haven't ordered them yet. Once I get those, I can figure out their size and depth and cut the two channels for those two. Which reminds me, Dane over at Jonah Guitars just did a video on cutting the carbon fiber rod slots. Super, super cool little video, handy little tricks in there. So I'll probably employ some of those uh, ideas that he threw out there. So check those out. Okay. What's next? Cutting some holes in the body so we can test fit these in there. That'll be exciting. All right, just for my own knowledge, I kind of want to know how much these neck blanks weigh. So 1.6 pounds. That's really light. One point eight. So the five piece is slightly heavier than the seven piece. Not much. I mean, it's inconsequential. Okay, so that's really good. So these are under two pounds right now. Once you get the truss rod in and the fretboard on, I'm guessing they're going to be on and then we shape it down probably about two pounds. So with a five pound body and a two pound neck, cover plate, cone, I'm hoping we can get under eight pounds here. That might be ambitious, but I'd really like to be under eight pounds on these two. Mm. 